I don't remember a single Jewish person growing up in Boise, Idaho in the 80s and 90s. In junior high or high school, I definitely remember reading Chaim Potok's book, The Chosen, but that's as close as I got to Jewishness, apart from what was in the Bible. Similarly, I never knew any neo-Nazis, which may be more surprising. Idaho has a bit of a reputation for neo-Nazis, but they typically lived farther north, and the whole concept just sounded like a group of movie villains. It didn't seem real. But I did grow up with members of The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, aka LDS or Mormons. LDS listeners, I apologize for what I'm about to explain. It is the perception I remember growing up. Which, of course, later, with much more context and empathy, I would find absolutely preposterous. But here it goes anyway. A lot of my friends were LDS, and so was my first serious girlfriend ever. My family wasn't Mormon, we were more casually Christian, but the Mormons, as those of us who were not LDS called them, were viewed with suspicion. A lot of people who weren't LDS considered the Mormon faith a cult, brainwashing, and primarily concerned with turning women into baby factories. The LDS church held secret weddings in their mysterious temple to those who were worthy, no outsiders allowed. And when the LDS missionaries came to our door, we shut the curtains and hid on the floor as if we were under attack. We othered our LDS neighbors, distrusted anyone in authority who was LDS, because we casually thought that there was some secret Mormon agenda and they were trying to take over everything. We, they, we felt threatened by them and I know the feeling was mutual, this is the closest thing I have to understanding the threats the gospel writers in Luke and John were facing and writing about. In today's episode, I hope you'll find a greater context than just the us versus them. The devil, quite literally, is in the details. This is The Devil You Don't Know. Satan. <laughs> Satan. Satan. When are you going to interview uh, my friend Matt from Useful Charts? Did that uh, ever get solidified? No. Oh, okay. I, I thought you said you wanted to. Oh, and I you were working to. on that. Oh, okay. I don't know. Uh, I haven't figured out how to contact him. I oh. did contact Religion for Breakfast, mm, mm-hmm. and I joined his Patreon and contacted him directly. And he's, he's in. We just haven't oh okay up. i thought i got those I two would, reversed yeah. i thought you wanted to get henry still but had gotten matt so no. okay yeah but i would love to get matt as well because he's amazing i had so many youtube links on this last episode <laughs> 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 all right well chapter four you guys we're getting a twofer this is luke and john Yes. And, you know, frankly, um, I think I think I'm ready just to put them together into one episode. I For mean, sure. I'm kind of getting real tired of Gospels right now. I don't know about you. No, I'm over them. It's it's the same damn story. Yeah. Uh, but yep. different <laughs> with a few different <clears throat> words here and there. <clears throat> yeah. And in this one, you know, it's Luke and John inherit Israel's legacy the split widens and what's going on there. I, my thought was, uh, or my takeaway was the farther you get away from the event of the actual execution crucifixion, mm-hmm. um, the more anti-Semitic it, the becomes. more divided. Yeah. yeah. It gets, um, the yeah. more anti-Jew, the more sympathetic to the Romans. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, with Luke, so, I think like they do in the chapter, we'll talk about Luke first, <laughs> and then we'll s- switch over and hit John um, in the face. <laughs> <laughs> How's your um, God? Yeah. <laughs> the God of light and life. Whatever. We'll get to that in a second. 
So Luke, Luke is the only non-Jewish author in the entire New Testament, apparently. It's really interesting. Certainly the only Gentile gospel writer. But so she, she Elaine Pagels, uh, describes that Luke speaks for Gentile converts who consider themselves the heirs of Israel. And I, I was, I saw a, a few posts on Facebook recently about these Christians who almost word for word said that, you know, that we're the true Israelites or whatever. Yeah. Ouch. Well, we know what you're searching on Facebook. If you're seeing lots of those. <laughs> oh, Don Early likes this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm probably my my algorithm's all screwed up these days. It sounds like it. <laughs> yeah. So um I mean I've got notes and stuff from the from the chapter, but initial thoughts, like what do you think? So it was brought back around in the last part of the chapter, and I thought it was a, a real interesting kind of comparison. So since we're starting at Luke, I'll just bring up the pieces. Mm -hmm. When Luke was being written, there was this really clear kind of understanding and, and that this is not going to be a religion or a following that is made up of Jews. Mm. And so the message had changed. The, the ways the stories had been given had changed. The contexts of the stories had been changed. Because the other nations, which is, I still, I just find that to be fascinating that Gentiles literally just means everything that's not a Jew. Yeah. But, but <laughs> the Gentiles, which are now being a follower of this and, and trying to follow this teachings of Jesus, you know, it, as this person now, have to be, context has to be added. There had to be things that, that were given in a common term rather than the straight lines. Yeah, because... Because the, the audience had changed. The audience had changed, right? And so their history and their understanding, I just found to be really an, an interesting take. Because I I di didn't know this before, right? When I was taught it, it was just all of, everything is true. It's all true. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, yeah, exactly. Same here. Everything is completely true. It's like, yep. well, what about this part? Like, well, it's all true still. <laughs> it's just different <laughs> yeah. opinions, right? So to to recognize that his stories changed in the way that they were delivered, because the audience that they were being given to had changed. And that was really interesting and, yeah. and made sense. When you were in church and it was like the festivities of, well, I mean, all of Holy Week, right? But do you, do you remember going to church and then acting out the passion oh, or sure. like reading mm -hmm. it, having assigned 13 stations of the cross? lines and stuff and yeah what no i i was in actual plays i was i was acting them out oh you, you guys had like what what was the 13 stations of the cross what was that well that's stolen from the catholic church but on good friday oftentimes i don't know if that's what you're referring to yeah 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 so on good friday uh, the uh the protestant denominations that have catholic roots you know the the liturgical Right. Protestant churches. Yep. Martin say. Luther like loved the ceremony and the tradition of the Catholic Church. He just didn't like the belief. So oh, and for Lutherans, a lot of the ceremony. Well, a lot uh, of the liturgy is The liturgy, out. exactly, is the same. Yeah. Hmm. So the 13 stations of the cross are these 13 events that there's like a I don't know, an image or a painting or a stained glass or something representing that particular station of the cross. And it's the progression through the passion narrative uh, and it's just split up into 13 different events or, or whatnot. I don't remember what they are. It's been. So, and, and so we read out like lines, like mm -hmm. there. Yeah. yeah. And so during the service you're if you were assigned a part, you would stand up and read your part. Mm -hmm. Um, but doing a, a close inspection of the Gospels like we have been doing in these chapters here, reading that, I, I would recognize immediately because we did this year after year after year, and it just became like ingrained in your head what these verses are. Mm -hmm. What we were reading, and I don't know if this was your church also, but they had the certain lines from different 
gospels. They didn't just yep. do it from one specific gospel. And I was just wondering how they went and picked and choosed. Oh, we we like we like this one from Matthew. We're going to put this in. We like this one from Luke. We're going to put that line in and stuff. And so wh- when I was reading all of these and just seeing the different wording that was used, especially, you know, crucify him, crucify him, or the people who demanded Mm-hmm. that uh, Jesus be crucified. And here's Pilate looking innocent in one and looking guilty in another, you know? <laughs> yeah. It, and just, it bl- it blows my mind. Because when I was a kid, I didn't think anything of it. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought, oh, we're reading this. This is a gospel that, that we're reading and stuff. And now I can recognize, oh, they like chose different lines from the different gospels to put this all together. And um yeah, to tell this story. Yeah. And so it's a it's such a different take depending on who you're reading, which might be why they put it all together in one. <laughs> um, but yeah. And as someone who loves history, I want to know what actually happened. Yeah. I, I don't I don't want these people are like, oh, let's tell the story, but let's 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 make these people the bad guys because we want these people over here to like come and join our Mm -hmm. group. And, you know, and I like, now I'm kind of pissed. I saw we, we did the study. Yeah. We did the study of all four of these gospels and it's just like, what the hell? Yeah. Get the story straight. I want to know what happened. I don't want your like manipulation of events here. So anyway, Mm -hmm. that, yeah. I no. think your ty- your tirade is is well received <laughs> because I feel very was similar. Was that a tirade? I didn't mean for that to be a tirade. Oh, is it going to have my tirade music? Are you no. going to do that? Okay. No, good. no, because you're on topic. So <laughs> okay, I'm on topic. Okay, for once. <laughs> no, Jeremy, I just want to recognize that I see all the questions in your face. So well, I'm going to get oh, to those. I, yeah. I, um, I appreciate it. I'm no. blind as a bat, so I can see. Yeah. No questions in your face at all. <laughs> but I think your point is well taken. I, I'm 100%. That's exactly where I'm at with, I mean, take the, the Christmas narrative. It, you know, yeah, it's going right. to come up sooner than Easter now. So check that out. When well, you start, when you start listening or, or seeing the readings, um, it does dawdle between Matthew and Luke. Mm-hmm. Um, of course, Mark completely ignores the, birth story because it was important to him. Right. But I don't know. I mean, once again, Matthew was Jewish and was pissed off at the Jewish leaders and the chief priests and scribes. Yeah. Luke was a Gentile and needed to validate the same story. But which I guess is why I had higher expectations for Luke kind of being more. (laughs) You were the last one. You should have had all the details. More removed or not having a, I don't know, not having his hat in the ring. I I don't know. Not, like not being so close to it, but no. No. Pissed at him too. <laughs> well, that's fair. Jeremy, <laughs> let's circle around to you. What, oh, yes. What? What's going through your brain? <laughs> what did I just bring up for you, Jeremy? Yeah. yeah. I, a real interesting. I, I mean, that you set up one of the first kind of real different ways that we grew up when mm. when we started this we talked about how we all grew up in the church and and, and we all grew up with, with different things but like this is as i i grew up uh protestant like like four square protestant and so there was a lot of the bible is the truth as it is and there is you know vineyard churches and lots of 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 big band dancing and, and lots of removal of anything that would have been ceremony and Mm -hmm. uh, my mom grew up catholic and so in her own level of i still believe this but i don't believe what my parents believe and and that doesn't make sense there was a lot of the anti-mysticism and uh in a a whole different set of context for that (laughs) which is really funny mm -hmm. because look what look what they developed instead (laughs) oh my god right the the whole (laughs) whole new level uh but but it really had that just kind of like no we're following just truth we're not following traditions and and particular items and, yeah. and, and absence, right? Right. Like, you know, communion is a different thing. It's not always given by a priest and, and like all of these different levels. And so I'm approaching Luke from that standpoint, mm-hmm. right? From this level of 
this was taken as truth. And um, hearing so much of John come back and so much of Luke come back in the different ways that the story was being told and and the the crucifixion and the passion of the Christ and all, all that different levels. And hearing it again from this idea of what the audience is, mm-hmm. of, of who is supposed to be hearing this and why is the story being told this way, and recognizing repeatedly because it was ingrained in my head for 20 damn years of like, this is the truth. This is, this was a person who was there and and seeing the other side of it. I had, I had just different levels of thoughts going through. So I, I still now even hearing where you're coming from and the perspectives that you're bringing to it, I hear that there is this level uh, of that's being put into that of why there was a constant re- repetition, a constant hearing, a constant thought of, this is how it is. This is how these people are and really setting up the others, the, the us and the thems that still was kind of derivative of the Christian movement. Absolutely. The uh, Again, it says the split widens here. Yeah. I think this is definitely we're talking about. My notes were that Jesus's Jewish enemies are aligned with the evil one. The, the right. power of darkness. So it's becoming more and more for Luke, the followers of Jesus, be they Gentile or Jew, if they're tr- followers of Jesus, they are the true Israelites. They're the only ones left, you know, that really can uh, claim that anymore. And anyone who rejects Jesus as Messiah and you know, that sort of thing is sort of aligning with the devil. You know, it's interesting that he also kind of notes, Luke, I'm, I'm talking about reports yeah. that there were no animosity on the part of Herod or the, you know, Jerusalemites or whatnot towards the infant Jesus in the birth story. Right. We didn't get that Exodus kill mm-hmm. all the kids thing in Luke. Also didn't get that that contrast again, right? That comparison of the just like Pharaoh, just like mm-hmm. Moses, right? That that was being given to the the Jewish context. Yeah. Again. But we do get this really interesting thing with the devil challenging Jesus right after his uh, baptism, right? So the devil challenges Jesus three times, three times he's defeated. And then, as Pagels puts it, he departs until an opportune time. And those words she, I feel like, spells out pretty clearly, or as she kind of lays out an argument that that was a, such a very intentional wording that he went away for an uh, opportune time. And then she comes back to it with Judas Iscariot and and brings those words up again until there was an opportunity to betray him until, you know, until the, the opportune time had come around at the crucifixion, that sort of thing. So the devil is playing the long game in Luke and humanity is his pawns. He's arranging things as we go. Wasn't one of the temptations or something like, Hey Jesus, I tempt you to go to this town where there's a whole bunch of people who want to kill you. No, How, uh, but we're going to get to that story, I think. Oh, okay. Um, I was like, that's hardly a temptation. <laughs> <laughs> you got to up your game a little bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, uh, she goes into the the different temptations. There's three of them. And let's see here. Is or it- one of them was going into town and showing your powers as as son of God. What right? was that? Wasn't it all in the wilderness? Oh, I don't know. There was one where like, go show your powers or display your powers to people to show them you're son of God in this town where everybody wants to kill you or right. something like that. And it's just <laughs> like, uh, h- how is that a temptation? That's an easy no, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't mark it down, but that was just a thought I had while I was reading. You know what? Was like, where, what I'm thinking of is in John. Okay. We'll get to that in John. Oh, okay. I'm just, I didn't mean to jump ahead. I couldn't remember which one that was, but I was like, yeah. (laughs) Yeah, but you're not wrong. Um, You know, so uh, because they all have this story where Jesus resists the temptation three times. Mm -hmm. At least in my point, 
that's not tempting. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. What what they're tempting him with. Right. Yeah. Come on, devil. You got to do better than that. <laughs> so I'd kind of forgotten this one. Uh, the Jesus's first publish, or public te- uh, teaching. I don't know why I can't talk tonight. The first uh, Mercury public teaching. is in retrograde. Ah, that that's what it was. Starting fucking Mercury. Starting today through June third, somebody just sent me that, and that's like, oh, that's why I've been stumbling over my words all day today. <laughs> Good of explanation is anything else, in my opinion. I mean, who knows? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry for everyone listening to this podcast. Mercury's in retrograde. We're just gonna mess up everything tonight. <laughs> yeah, but it's kind of yeah. <laughs> Um. So Jesus's first teaching, he's going to teach in public and, you know, he relays that uh, he starts telling this wonderful thing, you know, this, this teaching and they're all amazed and they can't believe what they're hearing. And then he says, but it's also for the Gentiles, even if it replaces you. <laughs> and yeah. then they try and throw him off of a cliff. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't remember that last part. So much fury. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Jesus now predicts that his townspeople will reject him and declares that God intends to bring salvation to the Gentiles, even at the cost of bypassing Israel. <laughs> and then they will, they are pissed off. And that seems to be the, the real big thing with Luke. I think where we get a lot of our modern concepts of Jesus being... Like his followers are, he like pals around with the outcasts, right? With um, the poor and the despised, the sick, prostitutes and the tax collectors and the Sumerians or Samaritans, which I thought was kind of funny that uh, later on we we learn in this chapter that the Samaritans were really referred to as the not real Jews. Right. The, yeah. the, the fake Jews. <laughs> the fake Jews. The wannabes. <laughs> yeah, still, still Jews, right? Not those Gentiles, but, but like the fake Jews. Yeah. I wonder if that's like Jack Mormon. Do you know that term? No. What? Is this an Idaho thing? Neither of you know that term? No. Mm-mm. Okay. It's an Idaho thing. <laughs> Must be an Idaho thing. I don't know. But no, no it's, tell. it's a, a Jack Mormon to the rest of us non-Mormon people, was something that we, that uh, not we, well, I guess I did at some point or another in life. We would call people who were Mormon, but not very Mormon. They they associated themselves as being Mormon, but they drank alcohol. They, or maybe mm, they didn't go okay. to church or, sure. you know. I didn't know that there was a term for that. Was it Jack Mormon? Because you're just like, oh yeah, I'm, I'm Mormon. Like last name, like, my name's Jack Mormon. I literally do not know where that comes from, and it's probably pretty derogatory. Uh, it's probably a word that or a term that shouldn't be used. Should ask some LDS some Mormons people. that we, we may or may not have talked to recently. <laughs> <laughs> they might know. Yeah, what's behind that? That's it's not a kind thing. <laughs> I think. Well, sure, that it wouldn't be a kind thing. I guess. Yeah. Well, it wouldn't be a kind thing to somebody who here's that communication thing again. <laughs> Yeah, well, like, it's like, what's the Christian term for that? Most of us? There's not like a Jack Christian. (laughs) Right. You know, or a kind of Christian or, I mean, there's the the terms for those who think that they're really Christian. (laughs) Everyday Christian. I don't know. I like what? I don't know. I don't know. It's not important. Maybe Jack, because it's like, I don't know. I, I got nothing. I got nothing either. Even if I Let's had something, on. I wouldn't be able to communicate it to you. <laughs> <laughs> Mercury. Retrograde. <laughs> okay. So we've talked about you know, Jesus' followers. Uh, so she, she talks about that they were very deeply loyal to the temple. Uh, and she illustrates it, it through Luke that really making the point, Jesus' followers were real worthy more so than, say, the the Pharisees or the Jewish leaders or or whatnot. Really trying to build up this case that Jesus' followers are the real God's people or whatever. Yeah. The spiritual warfare between God and Satan now intensifies. And 
Jesus is a divider. And so he says, it says, uh, he's quoting on page 91 and 92. Jesus says, do not think that I've come to bring peace on earth. No, rather division (laughs) from now on in one house, there shall be five divided, three against two and two against three. There will be divided or they will be divided father against son and son against father, mother against daughter and daughter against her mother. But apparently not son against mother or daughter against father. (laughs) Hmm. Didn't use all of the combinations. These writers are just so lazy. Oh, my gosh. I mean, if you're going to use numbers, let's figure this out, huh? Use all the examples. Anyway, point is, I mean, Jesus is saying I'm real controversial. This is not something that maybe Jesus actually said or if it is or that doesn't matter. This is what Luke says. Right. Mm -hmm. And so there's a, it's just interesting that he would have purposefully wrote that for Jesus to say. And, and maybe it's something that he said he's being this, again, I come back to this notion of uh, Jesus being a Satan, being a, a, a Diabolos, a stumbling block for somebody else, right. A divider, uh, you know, it's interesting to me that a lot of the things that the Satanists that we have spoken with, how they champion Lucifer or Satan as the person who is the liberator, the the person who stands up for those who can't defend themselves or these despised and prostitutes and tax collectors and the sick and the poor. You know, it's 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 kind of. Interesting parallels between the two. I I, I agree. No, I, I I think that's that's. I mean, you're right on point. I I, I don't have anything else I was add to it, but I, I'm just kind of nodding verbally with you. Yeah. Yeah, I think I actually was naughty. <laughs> people can't <laughs> people can't hear me nodding. I was right. nodding. I was <laughs> in agreement. So we transition over to uh, a question that she kind of starts to throw out is did Luke have access to earlier or more accurate accounts of Jesus's trial and execution than the previous gospel writers? See, and and we get into this question about who, who wrote when and who was influenced by who. And again, we have no idea. There's just theories. Yeah. And, and so she lays a lot of that. I don't think we need to go into that. Right. Uh, No, we went into that previous episode but that's yeah. another thing that i'm mad that i don't have answers to right <laughs> but uh, to that point though i am more and more convinced that that luke and john were at least contemporary I, I, it's hard for me to just given what we've been learning and what we've been reading it's hard for me to accept that matthew and luke were contemporaries You know, it really does feel like Luke had time Mm -hmm. and maybe was facing different ideas. And definitely a little bit more of what John was facing. But from a Gentile, like John was was dealing with being outcast. We'll get into this. He was being sort of uh, ostracized from the Jewish community for being Christian. You know, because he was a Jewish convert to Christianity and his he and his fellow Christians, like Christians, were facing that sort of ostracization. Well, on the other hand, then you have the whole Gentile side of the Jesus following um, who didn't really have that to begin with. Um, and they are facing their own. And so it's it's hard to I mean, obviously, it's hard to nail down, but it does it does feel more closer to. John's time period or or later, as Marcus Borg suggests, that Luke might even be significantly later, you know, 50 years later uh, than John. That's pretty interesting. Yeah. But my my struggle with that is then why didn't Luke use any of John? Because John right. was so weird. But the, the conversation, I think, came up in the book a little bit in that the focus was so different. It was different, right? yeah. Right? Uh, Luke really had a particular message to particular people where, as John's was really all about the, the theocratic level of it, really yeah. had that the spiritual world and the spiritual combat. And, and it mm-hmm. wasn't so much about 
you know, finding the division or determining who was the right one. It yeah. was, and we'll get, get into it, I think, a little bit later on, but like, really, how do you call people out without calling them out directly and getting yourself in trouble? You, you talk about all of the creatures inside of them. Mm. And like, the demonic possession was strong inside John. You were either the right Jews or you're demon possessed. <laughs> it's just, yeah. it was this, yeah. this mm-hmm. whole level. Yeah. Well, and, it, and now that we're kind of talking about it, it does kind of sound to me, it would make sense that Luke as a Gentile follower of Jesus would have been really inspired by Matthew's gospel and wanted to provide his version from, from his perspective, but follow kind of a similar vein. So I don't know. Uh, it's I'm with you, Emily, in that the, the thing that bugs me the most as we are learning this and really getting the context of it is that they don't take the time in church to, to paint this picture of. Oh yeah. Not at all. I, and maybe it's because there's not enough people that are interested and they don't want to know this shit, but I don't understand how you can read this gospel and then still think it's the same thing in the, the next gospel. Mm-hmm. They're, they're so different. I had no idea they were so different. Yeah. There's lots of similar words, but just the nuances on, on some of them. And yeah. granted, we're talking about translations here, too. Like, For sure. And copies I, of copies. At least, I mean, I think you've actually read the text, right? Because you, mm-hmm. in, in or their original, right? Well, I mean. Well. The, we have the, uh, the Greek New Testament. And so, I, yeah, it, my point is I don't speak Greek. Right. Hebrew, Latin. I don't speak Hebrew. I don't. <laughs> it, I, I'm relying on English translations for all of yeah. this. So, yeah, I, I don't. I got to trust that the translators are, are doing the right words for the right things. And I know that there is. It's never perfect. It's never perfect. And even now there's controversy about. Yeah. Like, you know, yeah. because again, we brought it up, I think, in the last episode that translation is commentary. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And you just can't get around that. Yeah. And it's also because, you know, the way you think and the way you think they thought, <laughs> mm-hmm. it, it it can't translate all the, all the time. Right. But it's it's just it's very different. The more I read and the more that I got from it and, and seeing by the time we get to John, the Jewish people are are basically evil. I mean, it's, mm-hmm. it's, yeah, he, it's against the Christians now. Like, I just felt nauseous by yeah. reading that. And, and like, I just I, I grew up hearing this, had no idea. Mm-hmm. But again, I'm also I'm also doing a deep dive into this stuff right now and i'm i'm looking for this stuff now Mm -hmm. that's the point of this and so it's really sticking out to me Mm -hmm. and i just i I really really don't like it yeah Uh, it's uncomfortable it's really uncomfortable it is uh but i think it's important to look at it and I think it would be unfair to say that John was anti-Semitic or that Luke was anti-Semitic. Sure. Really? Yeah. We're looking at it backwards through the lens of time and through the lens of all the atrocities and things and how people have used these passages for anti-Semitic purposes. Okay. Yes, Um, I agree with that. We are looking through it through that lens. But when they're writing it, Mm -hmm. they, you know, it's, it's difficult, but they are facing their own issues. And I don't think we've gotten to the point where they're not in power. So anti-Semitism can't really be too much of a thing yet. I mean, they can not like the Jews or they they can kind of put them off a bit. But uh, I mean, you got to remember, or Matthew, Mark and John are all Jews. Yeah. And Jesus was a Jew and all, I mean, so it's more complicated than saying these anti-Jewish things. Yes, there's, there's contra Jewishness going on, but I wouldn't call it anti-Semitism. Okay. I see what you're saying now. Yes. And I, I agree with that. We are, we are definitely getting with Luke and, and John, we're definitely, we've got some time 
that has happened. We're yeah. getting more and more use of this term, the Jews. Mm-hmm. And she, she spends a fair amount of time really delineating that. I mean, they are used to say, okay, well, Jesus, Jesus was Jewish. He was a Jew, but, but the author doesn't use it in a derogatory way, just a way to describe who this was. Uh, they describe people who are also Jewish. That's, you, you know, those terms are used in the New Testament as well. But as we get into Luke and John, we are also getting this nuanced, the Jews as a targeted group of people who are against Jesus. It's yeah. just this this vibe through the whole thing. It's just, it's it's there, it's under the surface. Mm-hmm. And that's what I was getting from it reading that. Yeah. And yeah. um and it was it was just, yeah, the divide is growing. I never saw this before either. They're they're creating the divide. Yeah. That's, I mean, that's kind of the the thought, right? That's the process. Is there was the where when when he looked at Matthew trying to tell the stories that, uh, and again, who the message was to. By the time Luke and John are there, they're like, so they've messed up. All of them, mm-hmm. they're not doing it anymore. These are the real people. These are the real mm-hmm. believers. The real followers. Therefore. They've got demons. Yeah. <laughs> they they have been seduced right. by the dark side. They're agents of the dark side. We're not. We're agents of the light. And it really did like drive that wedge. That was that was a big part of what the books were. Yeah. So it's just kind of like a self-fulfilling prophecy. It is. Yeah. 100%. We're, there's a wedge here and we're going to write about it, point out how horrible this is and make the, the, the divide even even bigger. Yeah. And we're just going to keep that divide going because we're just going to keep writing about it and and painting these people over here in a terrible light. Yeah. And um, yeah, it's icky. A lot of the reasons, <laughs> though, is that uh, this budding faith, still trying to discover what it is, there's a ton of different sects and cults of Jesus that are mm-hmm. out there trying to figure out how to be a community and they're getting stomped by the dominant religions and, you know, and those who are in power. And so there's yeah. this animosity and resentment that's just growing and growing because the other thing is that, you know, to them, Jesus was the Messiah is, is the mm-hmm. divine being that was killed Right. And why wouldn't you be upset at the other side? And if he was this holy being, then yeah. And I guess just living in today's world with everything that's going on in the world right now, yeah. I just want to scream at these texts. Just it, right. Just just let each other be. <laughs> Leave each other alone. <laughs> and I, I can't imagine there was ever a time when they were uh, written that they would have any understanding or knowledge of the impact that they would have. Oh yeah. Literally thousands oh, of years later. Totally. And, yeah. and what it would have done in the world. I, yeah. I, I got to imagine they would have changed a couple of things if they knew. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Just, why can't we all just get along? <laughs> because some of us <laughs> hold the truth and the rest of everybody holds the lie. That's why. <laughs> yeah. And it's just reality shaping. And it's bullshit. me and not you. That's right. <laughs> We're getting towards the end of, of Luke here. Pilate, we get to Pilate. Um, he tries to exonerate Jesus like three times. He pronounces him innocent three times. I kept times. loving how Pilate changes. Like yeah. every one of these books, like Pilate's just a little different. Like, yeah. well, who he do did we it have, this way. Who do we have this time? Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Yeah. But still shaping it more and more into this. Well, Pilate's real reluctant. He's the Roman person. Gonna have to charge Jesus with the official charge. Well, I guess I have to. So it's pretty clear that th- this gospel reveals that Luke knew that Jesus was executed by Roman authorities and the charge was sedition. The author had access to s- to official records is what she's going off of and is is constructing the narrative around that to fit those facts. Yeah. She mentioned that, that that Luke probably also had some records that the others didn't have. Mm -hmm. And so he was Mm -hmm. very, very particular about the things that he had said. 
makes a lot of sense because he was a physician. He was very intelligent. And I will tell you that it is the nicest Greek to read in the New Testament. (laughs) (laughs) I believe that. It's very eloquent. Uh, Whereas Paul, yeah. (laughs) Paul keeps you guessing. Oh, my husband can't. My husband can't stand Paul. There are a lot of a lot of reasons for and against, uh, for sure. So uh, on page ninety six, I wanted to read this passage. We're just talking about how Luke knew that Romans had actually pronounced sentence. Yet, as Luke tells the story, he allows and perhaps even wants the reader, especially one unfamiliar with the other accounts to infer that after the Jews had arrested Jesus and a Jewish court had sentenced him to death, it was the Jewish soldiers who actually crucified him, not the Roman soldiers. Huh. Yeah. (laughs) So Jesus demonstrates trust and submission to God rather than the agony. Luke Mm -hmm. removes all that. Yeah, it took, took the whole passion part out of that, right? Yeah. Yeah. And even on the cross, you got the two r- robbers or whatnot, and one of them is antagonizing, and the other one is like, hey, uh, save me, would you? <laughs> yeah. And so even dying on the cross, Luke's Jesus demonstrates the power to forgive and to save even then to a nobody. Even a criminal can recognize Jesus's divinity you know, so for Luke, these are these are big things. And then in Acts, we really submit or, you know, solidify this term, the Jews, right, mm-hmm. as the real reason Jesus was crucified and, and paints a well-meaning weakling in Pilate. In summary, those who reject Jesus accomplish Satan's work on earth. Right. And and. It, I'm like that, that's that was an interesting summary that came out of Luke, but it was like so much more hammered with John. Oh yeah, right, right, like I, I I had to go back a little bit and like whoa 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 wait, did we just switch because because that was that was a quick summary of like Satan's work is happening on Earth because of the things that happened to Christ, but like John like took it that extra step. Not only was was Satan doing his work, but he was the the actual antagonist to mm-hmm. Christ, but but not in an incarnate form, other than doing it through other people. Yeah, and like I just like over and over again, they're like, "Oh, they're possessed. Oh no, now they're possessed. Oh, I possessed him." <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, that's an interesting point, though. I didn't think of that. That could be an argument that Luke had access to John. Yeah, that's Ooh. that's a good point because. It was John that really said that. That that was his big deal. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Let's get into John. And so John and his fellow Christians have been forcibly expelled from synagogues and denied participation in comic worship. At least that's that seems to be the claim or the 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 sting, the pain that John is writing from. Many have pointed out that John's gospel as we've seen throughout history, has really been the source of a lot of uh, anti-Semitism or, or ins- inspiration. Look no further than the Mel Gibson Passion of the Christ. Oh, my God. Yeah. Villainizing being a Jew. Oh, yeah. I never watched it. You're not missing out. I, it's not good. I won't. I won't. I, I nearly walked out when Jesus started speaking Latin. What? <laughs> I'm sorry, what? It's a good one-sentence story right there. Really don't think Jesus learned Latin. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give him Aramaic and Hebrew, those two, but sure. I don't know that he would have had access to the others. So John is a, a Jewish convert to Christianity. That is the scholar's general consensus. And he paints this real interesting picture In one explosive scene, Jesus accuses the Jews of trying to kill him, saying, You are of your father, the devil. And the Jews retaliate by accusing Jesus of being a Samaritan, that is, not a real Jew, and himself demon-possessed or, quote, insane. (laughs) There's there's the first one. Here we are. Let's just... (laughs) (laughs) So, you know, there's a lot of setup here, but... What's interesting is that Lewis Martin, 
yeah, um, New Testament right. scholar, it talks about that uh, John's crisis or his community is the invention of this curse, what he refers to as the benediction of the heretics. And he gives the Hebrew word for it. I I don't know if I should try and pronounce it. Berkat ham, haminim. Not sure. It's a self-inflicting curse. If you were a follower, if you're a Christian and you were in this service, you start the service off by cursing yourself for being a Christian and your descendants. I mean, it's that, wow. This, wow. you know, so, so that, it, that's pretty bad. Obviously that's one of the things that John is, is facing with and in, in dealing with um, his, uh, what's the word? Retrograde. <laughs> Mercury. <laughs> uh, resentment. Resentment's the word. Mercury's in retrograde in Gemini, and it's a shitstorm. <laughs> 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 I know nothing about astrology. I just have to tell everybody I I know zero about astrology. Except that somebody just before we recorded this sent me an article that I happened to read. I promise you that is <laughs> all I know. And apparently Mercury in retrograde is a big thing. So it's a big bad thing, I guess. But it it's totally fucks up communication. That's 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 what I read. <laughs> it must be true. Well, okay. I mean, look at the three of us. <laughs> Yeah. Or at least Don and I, Jeremy, you seem to be doing fine. I'm just riding the wave. I'm, I'm just <laughs> staying quiet whatever chance I get. And so I can only say the one thing here and there. <laughs> You're immune. <laughs> <laughs> what are these powers you have? Scorpio. Well, see, I am a Gemini. This this thing has me totally screwed up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. You're going to do the music, aren't you? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Now you're off topic. <laughs> I was doing so good. <laughs> We're staying quiet for a reason. <laughs> you guys have to interrupt me. <laughs> Why would we get gold like that? This is not gold. <laughs> this is me just, just showing that I need more hours of sleep at night. I hear that. So let's get back. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. So uh, Pagels actually goes on to talk about that John is actually facing something even worse than this curse that we're talking about. They're actually excluding Jesus's followers, preventing them from worshiping alongside fellow Jews. If you are a Jewish convert, you were a Jew, now you're uh, a new Jewish Christian. You have all this history and tradition and everything that you're used to in your way of life. And now that is all forbidden. You are barred from that. You're kicked out, excommunicated, whatever you want to call it. And so that's a pain that he is writing from. And so he takes it cosmic. John goes cosmic in this yes. uh, conflict Completely. with Jesus' story. Yes. So Mark starts the whole thing with Jesus' baptism, and then he's off and running. Matthew goes, well, I think it's probably when he was born. Let's go back to that Moses and... And Pharaoh's story, and we'll we'll trust that up. And and Luke's like, yeah, I like the birth story. That's cool. But John's like, fucking Genesis. <laughs> Creation of the universe, motherfuckers. This is his this predates light and everything. Dark. Yes. And we're talking about the primordial light and darkness. And uh Jesus is the light. So we have and, uh, Another thing that is really interesting to me is we have light, truth, and life against darkness, lies, and death. And these have to be just universal concepts in the ancient world. Uh, mm. Because light and truth were real big with the Zoroastrians. But I was going back and in, in looking into this because I have a hard on for Zoroastrians, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> Everything's from Zoro Zoroastrians, you know, Zarathustra, which I still can't say. But Egypt had a very similar feeling about light and truth. 
And and so uh, you know, in the in in the ancient world, this may have you know light and truth and goodness, or maybe goodness wasn't necessarily a part of it, but light and truth and life were were on one side, and and darkness and the lie was on the other side. And so you know, Araman or the Angra menu was the embodiment of the lie, um, right. and lying was terrible for the Egyptians as well. So. I keep trying to shove it back to the Zoroastrians, but I'm I'm thinking it's more of a larger, broadly understood concept. In, in all fairness, though, like back to what John's original message was, right? Like that's a big part of it. It's it's the it's the setting up the well, truly, it's the setting up the big us versus them, mm-hmm. and and so he was creating that level of context, that really hard line of the followers of Christ and not followers of Christ or mm-hmm. specifically antagonists of Christ. Yeah. It, with, with the liars and the darkness and then, and demons and right. Mm-hmm. And the possession and all of that. It was, it was just a big part of the way he used the language. So having that kind of connection, having that, I'm not even gonna call it universal, but, but a, a easily understood reference of the light versus dark and, and the Zoroastrianism that, 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 has been around by this point, like 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 it is an is an understood thought. Really allowed him to connect to his audience mm-hmm. in that other way, and in that way of setting up the, the. Well, I don't know what your Jesus is. I don't know what what the Pharisees are all talking about. It's like, well, do you know light and dark? Do you know light? You know what mm-hmm. light is versus evil, and what lies are. That's them. These are us. Like yeah. really, really creating that separation for his audience, I think. I mean, what a hook. What what a sales pitch, right? Yeah. Right. And that's what this is all about, is how do you appeal to the broadest audience for the urgent, most urgent need or create the most urgent need, you know? Yeah. That's a really good summary, Jeremy. I like that. Thanks. Me too. So, yeah. So, <laughs> like you said, then... That means light equals Jesus and darkness is anything that's, I like what you said, anti-Jesus, against Jesus. Yeah. Not just not Jesus. It's, you know, it's the, you can have not Christians, but really it's these people who are actively against the Christians that are the the agents of darkness, the sons of darkness. Totally agree. And as cosmic and everything as it is, I never paid attention to the fact that the devil doesn't make a bodily appearance in this gospel, really. He, the devil it does not appear as a separate disembodied entity or being. Rather, as you stated, Jeremy, people take on the devil's roles. Yep. And the devil shows up in, in other figures or other stories, but the people take on his role instead. And this is the temptations that we were talking about, uh, Emily. So there is the three temptations Mm -hmm. and starting on page 101, she starts breaking out that in gospel of John, people replace the devil in the temptation stories. So instead of the devil saying, do this, it's a group of people saying that instead, which I thought was really interesting. For example, Matthew and Luke show Satan challenging Jesus to claim earthly power. But according to John, this challenge occurs when the people were about to come and take him by force to make him king. It's like, you're our king. <laughs> he resists right. the temptation. Which was, which in, in my mind was part of where the uh, the Luke reference came from. Mm. Right? There, there was the whole being declared and, and the, the Psalm Sunday and, and, you know, if the rocks would cry out, if the people didn't do it for me, that, mm-hmm. that that was what I was interpreting as that temptation in the wilderness of go to the city where the people would try to kill you. It was go to the city to be declared king ah. and, 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 and to be ruler of, the, of this land. And, and his temptation was a, against the pride yeah, of, yeah, yeah. of that, of, of being celebrated as the person, but, but switched interpretations again. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's 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 where I was getting it. From, Got it. it. Yeah, that makes sense. So, you know, Jesus escapes 
<laughs> like, yep. like a supervillain or something. In another temptation, Matthew and Luke, following Q, relate that the devil challenges Jesus to prove his divine authority by making these stones into bread. And she goes on to say, but John says that those who witnessed Jesus' miracles, and in particular the multiplication of five loaves into many, then challenge him to perform another miracle as further proof of his messianic identity. And like the devil who quoted the scriptures in Luke and Matthew, the people in John quote them as they urge Jesus to produce bread miraculously. In chapter 6, verse 30 and 31, so they said to him, what sign do you do? that we may see and believe you. What work do you perform? Our fathers ate men in the wilderness, as it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. And so Jesus resists this temptation as well. I'm not going to go on for the rest of them, but the point being is we he's grabbing those parallels, but he's making yep. groups of people do it instead. I think I like better than this diabolical singular being. Well, uh, hear me out okay. because it's more realistic. Mob mentality, group mentality exists. It's a thing. And yeah. and the other thing, you know, it's just it's so human, I think, that you just saw something amazing and they're saying, "Do it again." <laughs> oh yeah, totally. <laughs> we don't believe it. Do it again. <laughs> yeah, that's valid. There's a part of me, though, that like, I, I think it, it makes sense, again, from the storytelling standpoint, right? And, and the audience that, that he's speaking to. Uh, personal desires is, is I really wish there was an actual person villain instead. Because the way this is written and the way that it's done is that the devil acted through the mob because they let him. Because they were the 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 sons of Satan, and 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 they allowed themselves to be possessed because they were the opposites, and it just it really creates that picture of the divide. Yeah, right. That that again that that level point. that like you have Christians who follow Jesus Christ, and then you have the Jews who are not Christians and enemies of Christ. Mm-hmm. And, and right, and, and we already talked yeah. about this earlier, but like that's part of where that otherism, that separation came from. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Whereas if you had Christians and you had the devil, <laughs> this <laughs> one guy who's fighting everybody, like, cool, let's go fight that asshole yeah. rather than this group of people that, yeah. uh, right, if I could have done it differently 2,000 years ago, that's, <laughs> that, that's my edits. Would have made that. This is how it should have ended. <laughs> by jeremy spring that's right <laughs> yeah from the story standpoint that makes a lot of sense and and what a difference i would have made yeah if that delineation of a existential figure uh supernatural figure you know whatever this this principle of evil as a targeted external force i mean we still get that but as as you said very well that anybody who is against you the reader or the followers of of these willingly gave themselves up to the devil right those implications are terrible yeah yeah Um, absolutely this is where we get all these atrocities i guess this is where that term the jews gets really cemented as referring to a group of people that are against Jesus mm-hmm. more and more. John associates Satan with a specific human opposition first in Judas Iscariot. Satan goes into, the devil goes into Judas Iscariot in order to, you know, do the betrayal thing. The Jewish authorities who are clearly plotting against Jesus and then the Jews collectively. And everyone who opposes Jesus or contributed to his destruction and, you know, deny his divinity or Messiah, they are in service of the evil one. Right. I just feel like this this chapter hit that particular note between Luke and John pretty hard. Yeah. Yeah. 
I agree. Yep. And, and I think that's that's one of the biggest reasons that like both of these chapters were combined for this one is is there's that really, really solid connection right there. Yeah, it's very similar. Yeah. Um, and as we said, uh, well, it was interesting. So with Pilot, we talked about the further away from history we get to the actual historical person, the more sympathetic a character he becomes. Mm-hmm. Conversely, the more we remo- remove from history the more antagonistic the Jews, quote unquote, become. They become increasingly more antagonistic. So you have this sort of inverse thing going on between Pilate and the Jews. Yeah, Yeah. they're painted in a terrible light. Yeah. Well, I have no better summary than the one written on page 111. So I'm just going to read it. Cool. Cool. Writing circa 100 CE, John dismisses the device of the devil as an independent supernatural character, if indeed he knew of it, as I suspect he did. Instead, John tells the story, Satan, like God himself, appears incarnate, first in Judas Iscariot, then in the Jewish authorities as they mount opposition to Jesus, and finally in those John calls quote-unquote, the Jews, a group he sometimes characterizes as Satan's allies, now as separate from Jesus and his followers as darkness is from light, or the forces of hell from the armies of heaven. (laughs) Well, there you go. (sighs) There you go. Now it is a spiritual warfare. It is. Even still, I think one of the things that that sort of jumped out at me is, I mean, John is very big into the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. You yeah. know, the, uh, I mean, mm-hmm. this is all Jesus is the light and the life and, you know, he is God incarnate, you know, his divinity incarnate. Well, it never occurred to me that he did the same thing with the devil, but with the devil, it's not one person. It's a bunch of people. Yeah. Right. It, the devil is incarnate in many others. And, and I, the I tempters think, and the mob and, yeah. and the, 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 those who do doubt the him. And opposition. they didn't even call out the Pharisees, but 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 the leaders and the Pharisees again, same same kind of deal, the opposition. Yeah. And we're done with the Gospels. We're out. We're out. We don't have to repeat the same story again. Oh, <laughs> Yay! Well, I'm sure we'll come back to it, but... <laughs> yeah, so... Two more chapters and a conclusion coming up. Are we over half done with the book now? Yes, Mm -hmm. we are over half done. Yeah. So uh, next chapter is chapter five, Satan's Earthly Kingdom, Christians Against Pagans. Oh, man, Mm. I didn't even bring that part up. I wanted to. I thought that was such an amazing topic. And I think the reason I didn't bring it up (laughs) is because I started the next chapter Ah. Like, like the first 10 minutes and I was like, what? Like, like, <laughs> so here's the thing. Christians were being persecuted for being, I love this. I'm going to say it again. Christians were persecuted for being atheists. And that was a, <laughs> that was a major persecution that came on the Christians was for being atheists against the pagan gods. And I was like, <laughs> I never alone. thought of it like that. Like the <laughs> idea that you do not follow our gods and you don't believe in our gods. Therefore you don't exist. And and, and we're going to knock you out. And I was like, oh, atheists have always been persecuted even when they were Christians. Like it was so amazing. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. I started the chapter. So I, I think we'll bring that up in the next one. That's awesome. Well, and, and to, uh, so you were talking about how the Gentiles were referred to as Everything that's not Jewish. Yep. Right? Yeah. So then we get pagans, and pagans become the term that's everything that's not Christian. Yeah. Right? That's that's mm-hmm. that's certainly how it's been turned now. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So, awesome, guys. Well, uh, yeah, chapter five coming up. Christians against the pagans. Ding, ding, ding. Who's got the money on what? <laughs> <laughs> We'll see how it turns out, I guess. <laughs> Unfortunately, we know who comes out on top. <laughs> <laughs> I never have the the ending, the capstone, the sort of send-off 
thing. Jeremy, help me out. You lead these. Classes. Yeah, I, I, how, but how I, I can do, do it all the time. So, so <laughs> to, to to wrap up, uh, that was a lot of the spiritual concepts of what the devil was, who the devil was a part of, or the way it was determined. And in the next one, we'll talk about the battle royale of paganism versus Christianity and who the real atheists were. I'm excited. Man, there's no way I could have said that better. <laughs> <laughs> way to read ahead, Jeremy. Woo! <laughs> Over it. You win the day on that one. All right, folks. Good night. See you guys. Good night. This has been The Devil You Don't Know, and we are done with the Gospels. Up next, we begin our look at Chapter 5, Satan's Earthly Kingdom, Christians Against the Pagans. So, uh, suit up for that one. I've got some extra material for that, actually, from the Jeffrey Burton Russell book. So, might be a two-parter episode. Stay tuned for that. If you are enjoying this podcast, please consider joining our Patreon at patreon.com slash the devil podcast. As a contributor, you get access to our episodes before they release, bonus content, uh, you get to discuss future episode ideas and more. And the money we raise not only goes towards our monthly costs of the show, which I just tallied up and I have some thinking to do, but also helps raise money to have on prominent guests like scholars who write like books and stuff. Don't forget to rate us and leave a review on Apple Podcasts or Podchaser. Links are in the episode description. Thank you all for listening and remember the devil you don't know is the devil someone else does. Until next time. <laughs>